In this video we're going to talk about arrays and recursion. Now to do this I'm going to use a real-life project that uh, benefited from using arrays. Let me show you. In this project I created a do-it-yourself oscilloscope out of an Arduino board and a little LCD screen. And This little LCD screen has 48 pixels on the vertical axis and 84 on the horizontal. And All I did is I used one of the pins and I sampled it 84 times and then wrote those pixels onto the screen. That said, we can go straight to our Arduino sketches and start talking about what I had to do. Um, getting right in to the, the problem and that is we had to sample that analog input port 84 times. So I ended up creating 84 variables to store that data. So here we're declaring the variables. Then down in the loop we read the pin and then we scale it. Read the pin again scale it. We do that for all 84 of these variables. Once that's done we have to write the little pixels onto the screen. So here you see we're setting our y-axis to 0 and then I'm putting value 1 in there. y-axis to 2. So we're incrementing the pixels going to the right and then we're throwing the value that we pulled off of the analog input in. And we have to do that 84 times. Here I've gone and taken the liberty of opening these sketches up in Notepad++ and you can see that our sketch that does not use recursion has 404 lines. The one that does only has 80 lines. So what is a, an array? If we go check the Wikipedia out, they say an array is a collection of datum items that can be selected by indices. Well in our sketch we have to declare all of our variables so we end up declaring a whole lot of variables and a variable does a certain thing it does the same thing that an array does here's an array an 85 position array and here's a single variable this one can only hold a single value and an array can hold a lot of values. If we go back um, and for a quick an analogy um, if an array if a variable was a vehicle that you use to get to work this vehicle has one seat so that's a typical variable that has only can only store data for one item an array <coughs> would be like a bus where you can put a whole lot of data in it and you aren't just randomly putting it in there you have for instance in in the bus analogy you would assign seat numbers to each person so you can call them up when you want them uh, it's not just random but possibly a more efficient way of doing things depending on what you're trying to do the first thing we want to do is get rid of all these dang variables and we do that in this sketch right here by declaring an array. These sketches are identical so the only thing I did was I went ahead and deleted all these variables and I replaced it with a single array called my array and I told it that I wanted 85 slots 
so to speak, in there where I can put data. Now if you notice on this we are setting all these to zero but uh, in this example I decided it wasn't that critical to set them to zero but you can if you want. You could type out 85 zeros here and you can set them all to zero whenever you initialize the Arduino. Not real worried about that. Okay, so how do we use it? Well, in this example, you saw that um, we had to call all these variables and um, do the analog read and push the data into the variable. Well, in this program, you can use the single array and then just call it by seat number and push the data in. I've actually done this wrong. Uh, this was for demonstration purposes and uh, you can see how tedious it is to get all this right whenever you're having to do it long. So we're reading the value and then we're scaling the value just like over here we're reading the value and then we're going to go ahead and scale it. So we know what a variable is and we basically know how to use it. The next step is to use recursion instead of having to write this stuff all out. So we'll start right at the void loop and I will pull up this is my program that is using recursion. So with the void loop all of this data right here is actually being replaced with this little section here. It's about what six lines, five or six lines and what we do, we do have to define a couple extra things. For one thing, we need a counter to do recursion with an Arduino. So up here, I've added a counter. And of course, this counter starts off at zero. All right. So in this for loop, the code will execute downward and when it hits the for loop it repeats until this evaluation is false. So for starters it says the Y counter we want to do the for loop while it's between 0 and it's less than 85. So um, I believe that means it'll do it 84 times. It might actually do it 85 times because it's starting at 0 instead of 1. But anyway, we have this counter and once this ev evaluation is true, ending here, it goes ahead and it sets, it increments the counter to plus 1. So the counter started at 0, then it adds 1 to it it's going to loop through and then it's going to add another one to it making the counter two and so on so it loops through until it's done so what we were able to do is basically take these two lines and put them over here so what we do is we do an analog read and we put this analog read into here. And in the next step we go ahead and get out our array and this right here is we're scaling so we take this value we scale it and then we stuff it into our array. Um, y counter as we've seen up here as we start off Y counter is 0 right here we've set it to 1 so then right here we're going to be using my array and we're using the number 1 slot 
if you look in here it's the same thing as selecting this right here this is my array one and then we're pushing the data into it so we run through this 85 times or 84 times and load up this array with of all of our values so we get all this taken care of and then we get to the part where we're writing our pixels well right here right here notice that I'm setting that Y counter back to zero because I am reusing it in this one so this for loop works exactly the same as the one up above but we're using this command to set pixel we're using this counter again because lo and behold we just set it to one so our y-axis is going horizontally so we're starting with the first one as we loop through this pixel is going to inch over to the right because we have 85 to go on our screen to get to the end and then we're grabbing this array so at the first pixel we throw in the value that's in my array position one go ahead and loop through this 85 times and then display alright so a quick recap an array is like a variable it does the same thing only it can store a lot more things than just a single value. I did have to declare a couple extra things for counters and so forth. This for loop completely replaces all of this. And then this for loop replaces all of this. So as you can see um, this may be a little more confusing um, especially for someone who hasn't seen this code before to try to figure out what you're doing this is pretty straightforward they can see exactly what you're doing so recursion can come back and bite you when it comes to readability especially with people that uh, you know new people that are coming in to see the code and if you want multiple people to support it however we've reduced our size by over half so um, we can do quite a bit more if we wanted to add more to this code we can do a whole lot more than we could when we're doing this way because we'll just run out of uh, room now when it comes to speed and optimization um, I'm not quite sure which one of these would run faster I think that this one that's written out long may run faster but um, it's just a pain in the butt to to maintain all of these values and it's also a very pain, big pain to write this code because you have to debug all this stuff so in a nutshell that's variables and recursion